No more melting remnant, please. No, 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 no. Do not do it to me. That's not doing it to me. We've got broken memories, double hosting kin, and double perils of production in the base. Zanskia13, thank you very much for gifting a tier one sub to Supersonic20XX. Supersonic and Jerry Modes in chat. Welcome uh, to the Republic as well as thank you, Zanskia. How do you get it there? Should go on with the egg play. Ah, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're doing a couple of broken runs. A couple of egg fail runs as well. Uh, Alright. Plinks are in the base deck. Maybe this time we'll actually see the other Echo, right? Ech, divine Boon. Um. We have the Marsh Lord. Summon. Summons one Bog Chrysalis with 20 HP. Does it summon it before or be uh, ahead of or behind itself? I'm going to take it regardless, right? But in front... Perfect, that makes sense. Interesting. All those plinks are going to get pretty good with a noise stone. There's also Dun Echo. That is draw. I do like draw. Oh, this is hard. It feels like these plinks actually become useful if I take the notice stone. does say draw uh okay so it's the first time it's infused on a turn plinks and echo breaks aren't great ways to infuse is the thing and i'm definitely going to be building into consume more than i'm building into anything else bog chrysalis is the one that summons the bog flies I'm also playing Umbra. Umbra have a lot of consume cards in them. So it have the ability to tick up the Noise Stone pretty significantly. It feels like this is good early, this is good forever, but this is better early than this is early. So do I feel threatened early? I mean, with only one consume card in the entire deck, yeah, I kind of feel threatened early. Does Perils of Production help me change my mind here? So Perils of Production is... So it won't pass its Ember Drain to the... It won't pass Ember Drain to the unit that gets eaten. Uh, the unit that comes out of the egg, right? So if I hatch an egg, I can Perils it a bunch. It's just all of these cards are enhanced by magic power, so it's real hard to turn it down. IMO done is effectively a draw upgrade at its worst and more at its best. What is it at its best? The first time each turn, candy is added to a floor. Can you add candy to three different floors? I'm assuming this only triggers once. Last run was lost for taking draw over size. The hindsight's 2020, I guess, but yeah, you could say that. I mean, we also did need Wicklash on the turn that we drew it, and it was the last card in a draw, so. Only triggers once? Okay. Let's take it. Secondaria has a Merchant Magic Ram. Okay, yeah, there is a hell vent here. There's a hell vent here, right? And we have the opportunity to get two upgrades on something and then also 
slot a unit into it before we uh before we dupe it. Or upgrade a spell and then get that spell upgraded in the Divine Temple too. In fact, I probably do want to look at worms also. So does that mean I take the gold? Well, I can take the gold here if I really want to upgrade the Merchant Magic. I don't have to make the decision right now. There's a lot of temples on this line. Only one Divine Horde, early and late. Or both late, rather. Pass. Don't need it right now. Non-boss enemy units gain four additional damage. Unit draft. Yep, need the unit draft. Also, this is going to be fine. Have you used the Wormkin as a secondary clan? Did you like it? I haven't used it as a secondary clan yet. It's going to be a while until we get to that point. So just echo break these two as well. Then I can set up basically anywhere. Top of this, top of this still. Thank you, little spy. That's very kind of you to say. Link Plink. Sure. Ooh, Plink Plink Plink. Uh, that's a bunch of extra energy for next turn. Next me muscles too. Yeah, and the buffs will pass on to the minions they summon with them. Haven't we played any Echoes here on the top floor? Are you going to pop Shell with the current Infused cards? It's a good question, isn't it? I have no clue. None Echoes up there. Don't even have any consumed spells. It's gonna be our first etch. Play a plink kind of just freeloading there on the top floor next turn. I mean this will draw a card right now. There's the plink. Okay, we can get two into it, I guess. Two into it, break the line and take him simple you. Hmm. That does not help. Even slightly. Get a bunch of extra energy and do nothing with it. There you go. Can at least use the hosting kin for an enemy. And broken memories, nothing. Try and get a hatch on that top floor. So I need two, uh, two generations on the top floor this turn. Okay, that'll do it. So I just take damage to the way to contrition here. Perfect. All right, eleven thirty-nine. That's it's fine. Honestly, it's not that exciting, but it's not that exciting because they haven't been buffed yet. Now it's a little more exciting. I feel ashamed whenever I comment something since I created this account when I was like 14 or so, says Little Spy. Uh, and now I think my name is such cringe. Mine used to be Rhapsody Assassin. It was like, like, 
I'm 12 and this is cool. It's okay. You can change your name at any point. But also... Sometimes there's a... There's, sometimes there's a salvageable uh, morsel in there somewhere. That hosting kin is free. Does that make it good? It's free, but it also infuses. So it's a free draw. We've done it. You can change Twitch names every three months now. Hey, that's a good one too. Might rebrand to... Uh... No, I like Rams. I need to rebrand. Uh, I kind of want to just skip that. I got two in the deck. I mean, there's zero cost, so after I, if I do Ember Drain a bunch, I'm fine with that. You know what isn't bad? Or at least if it had infused, this would be great, right? Just put the Echo Infusion on the, the summoned Bog Chrysalis. It'd be great. Skip though. Antumbra Assault. Problem with the Antumbra Assault is we would have to use it on the wrong line a lot of the time. Packed Morsels is not bad here, right? It's a consume card that triggers the etch on Echo Riot, but it also gives me the ability to start putting some morsels into the shell. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh. Resolve gain plus six plus six. Wild. That's a keeper of echoes. It's an inspired trigger keeper of echoes. Gives plus one plus one to friendly units. We we'll give that to all the bog flies behind it. I can't I can't put any buffs on the egg. The egg is part of Echo, right? Right? I can't change the champion. How do you remove the shells without champion? Um, any candies at the end of the turn will be eaten by any eggs, uh, removing one shell per candy. Yeah, it's Keeper of Echoes and move from there. Like 100%, right? Go for a Wormkin banner, look for either an Inspire or an Etch trigger. That's where we get the Merchant of Magic upgrade. That Merchant of Magic upgrade takes the Divine Temple. What am I upgrading? I don't know if I have any cards that I want to upgrade that badly. Well, I guess Broken Memories, but doesn't really help right now. So do I take Keeper of Echoes and then go to the other side? The Merchant of Steel probably turn down the Umbra Banner? I could run Umbra and Magma in this patch. Very good. They got a lot buffed. I mean, yeah, that, there's also the world where I take a Morsel Maker, right? And put it on the top floor with the Echo, right? It gets drawn on turn one. The uh, the Antumbra and the Magma Morsels give plus six, plus six each turn to the frontliner. So until the hatch, I'm just getting plus six, plus six in them. I think the problem with that is it's it, it relies on me not getting this to hatch early in order to buff it a lot. And what, I get two turns worth of this resolving? If I do it on the top floor, that's two turns. And even then, I'm dazed on turn one. So it's one turn of resolution. Slow. It's real slow. Do the stats carry over? Yeah, they do carry over to the flies. I think I want Keeper of Echoes. Here's what I want. It's Keeper of Echoes, but... It's Keeper of Echoes, but now we look for an egg, and then we put the Keeper of Echoes in it. And then that egg has inspired again plus one, plus one. And it will also be able to be on the same floor as Echo, right? And start hatching with etch triggers. 
plus 20 consume and yeah that plus 20 and uh and, and consume on flinks is gonna be really really good right now yeah definitely perfect There's another Wormkin banner down here. And that's away from the Hellvent. And I don't necessarily have anything I want to Hellvent right now. Keeper and Keeper? No, 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 no. The Keeper doesn't go in Keeper. Two Keepers could totally go on the same floor. Right. Keeper, Keeper, play Echo right afterwards. That would require both Keepers in the same hand. The Glug Cider. Revenge, apply Reap 5 to the... We can't do it. So Reap relies on you still... Like, not only does this cost us a bunch of Echoes to play, which we need to play on the floor with our eggs in order to actually hatch them ever, uh, it also uses its Revenge to trigger Reap on enemies, and Reap is only good if you have a bunch more Echoes. So I would have to have ridiculous Echo generation and nowhere near as much energy, uh, echo uh, consumption as we have, right? This floor will just eat all of it. These each eat one. The extra egg we intend on getting will eat as well. I don't think we do that. Now, Keeper of Echoes is also a no. Skip. So, any magic power and consume on a plink happily. I also want, like... Just, do I really want zero costs? I don't need zero costs. I can use the, the Perils of Production relatively regularly for HP. For energy, sorry. I'm not even going to reroll. I'm going to save money here. I'm gonna buy anything. So my first purchase is honestly quite likely to be this Merchant of Steel. I'm gonna want a hard reroll for stuff. All right, I'll take this one. There are no Slate the Spire emotes here, huh? It's surprising to be honest, but the harder emojis are cute. Oh my god. Uh. Dragdom is, is is half correct in that um, I once mentioned I want to be a, a variety streamer or want to remain a variety streamer of a kind and not just be known as an SES streamer. That That's one part of it, but another part of it is uh, I, I feel like I, I don't I don't love the idea of tying some part of the channel's brand identity to a specific game in that way. Uh, in in the way of like having a singing bowl specifically as, as as an emote or anything like that, I feel like you risk in that circumstance. I don't know if risk is the right word. It just doesn't necessarily strike me well. <laughs> yeah, we can totally do this too. All right. They're on floor one. We consume. Okay, so we go Echo Riot, Keeper of Echoes. The etch triggers still go off. We're only here for the Talus Principle videos. <laughs> I recorded what? I didn't even release it. Risk being typecast as a player of that game. You do, but unfortunately, like, that is exactly what Dragtom just said. So, saying, that's half of it, Dragtom, but also the thing you said again, restated, is, uh, is a bit strange. Keep a post because egg space? Isn't the egg going? Yeah, the egg is one capacity. It's one. No, 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 no.
Plink me. Oh, that's a plinking and a half right there. Got plank all over. Okay, that's actually even already going to hatch this turn. I could get a bunch of extra energy set up for the next turn. If instead I went train steward and then just a bunch of rubble morsels here in the midline. Alternatively, what am I doing? I'm buffing further the bog chrysalis. That's not nothing. It's super far from nothing, in fact. It's something. You risk stagnation to some degree. That's definitely true. I, I feel like, especially like, th that that's more like a thing of like, if you lock yourself into channel memes as all of your emotes, that can become a bit dicey in that way. Got them all. I don't really like the idea of extracting it all on that top floor. I may actually just hard pass this turn. You take one damage for doing so. Okay. Packed morsels is nothing on the top floor, actually. Try and plink for a removal here. Well, at least we set up a removal. Let's play out the cards that aren't necessarily going to be helpful at all. The boss has sweep. Yep. Yes, it does. Well identified. One of the reasons I really like the idea of getting the... Where are you? What's your name again? the Keeper of Echoes was for the fact that it will be able to support against Sweep and against uh, Spikes by buffing the HP of the Backliners. Shelter is huge. So glad that's there and so glad that's infused. Perils of Production got a lot harder to play. Or did it get a lot easier to play? Am I an Ember Drain deck? God, am I an Ember Drain deck? It feels like we might be an Ember Drain deck, but what do we do with all the energy? It's super inconsistent. We fail to generate echoes a lot of turns. Does Ember Drain get removed when an egg hatches? Yes. It does not carry over. What's wrong with extracting? Reduces the amount of... Uh, so it reduces the amount of candy we have on that floor. And bog flies, the units that come out of the bog chrysalis, which comes out of Echo, right? Uh, have five extra damage per, um, per candy. Per Echo. You'll always have morsels to put the Echoes on. Not always. Three perils is kind of overkill unless you're doing something else, though. Maybe I just leave myself open to doing something else later. Something suddenly needs a lot of... What the hell? Oh, it's this event! So! She's a divine artifact, I guess. Couldn't buff any of these ones. Steward units get... Oh, good lord. That is very powerful. Uh, they get that in battle. They don't get that meta, right? Because, yeah, you wouldn't be able to eat them or anything like that. Plus six magic power is actually pretty good as well. It's... Honestly, it is probably Divine Tempered Talisman. What's the upcoming boss? 
Uh, Dentalist and Professor, double explosions. Any way to keep these awesome relics? Unfortunately not. Unfortunately no. Uh, okay, we're looking for eggs from the Wormkin banner. Please, just give me an egg. I mean, that's what I asked for. I will say etching, uh, like putting the first of kin into the Keeper of Echoes seems pretty good, actually. Because I'm going to be trying to do more etching. I haven't tried this egg yet, no. Apply Reap 2 to enemy units on strike. That gives us some AoE. Alright, Herzl. Actually, let's look at the Divine Temple first. Plus 30 magic power, plus 10 piercing. Split Anvil. Good lord. It's not Shadow Box. We're not doing enough significant stuff for that to be impactful. But Split Anvil doesn't really make sense here either. Ugh. I guess I still take the split anvil because it might be useful at some point, but oh, just yikes on yikes on yikes right now, you know? Okay. So the Keeper of Echoes goes into the Kin Host Vessel. Looking to give it multi-strike? It doesn't seem that huge now that it only gives the, you know, the plus one, plus one to itself. It does take capacity off of the field, though. Gives us the ability to start putting morsels there again. Also gets plus five HP. That's not nothing. Do I true stone a plink? That seems overkill. There is a lot more we're going to want to do with the divine temples going onwards. I'm going to have to save it, I think. Rare Hellhorn, Melting and Stygian Draft Pick. Maybe I should have waited and gone for this one first. Um... So, there is a possibility that in the Melting Draft pick, we get the uh, consume a bunch of cards and make a draft. And if we got that, we can just power through our etchings. Trigger a bunch of etches on the same floor. Alternative options. Hellhorn Draft for... No, it would pass on Fragile. Which wouldn't matter if I put it in the back line. Melting Remnant other picks. Not great, so we could just hard whiff on that. Rare Stygian Draft. That could give us uh, Gifts of the Guard. And Gifts of the Guard would be ridiculous here. Thank you. Definitely over Ice and Pyre still. So, Gifts of the Guard is going to be really good here because I can play it. It'll trigger the Split Anvil on all the cards I have in hand, but it'll also get me three cards to consume that have plus 20 magic power. Obviously, all the Echo Breaks, all the Plinks really, really want that. It's just good. Does it pass on armor? I don't think so. I might be wrong on that one, though. Have not tested it.
dang. I was really hoping this one was just unexamined and was somehow the negative two cost, so I could put that... Well, would I even negative two cost the uh, disregard? Maybe. Maybe I might. This will blow up for 20 damage. I mean, Flora's fine. Yeah, I guess it does give us the ability to start plinking them earlier. Okay. Yeah, it would be plinking on the top floor if I was doing that one right there. You know? When one candy is eaten, does it remove... Candies remove to remove shell at the end of the turn. Is, is like, shell removed from all units per candy that is eaten at the end of a thing? No. Wow. Okay, so it is just going to be real costly. Delectable. I... Do I go extra energy or do I go extra HP? HP. No energy turn needs me. Uh, and then just magma, magma, throw a rubble morsel behind so I have the ability to try and get a banked energy on a follow turn. White candy on the bottom floor because that's where the units were. If only I could consume this turn. Oh well. I need the extra energy for the next turn then. It's really bad. Like, I can echo break my own units two times here. <sighs> can, we, can we just get gifts for a guard, please? Just let me get gifts for a guard. gonna get eaten. You're gonna die. I'm playing safe. Do I even want to push you to the back? Yes. Topstar asks, uh, why are the channel points called pointy boys when they are clearly round smooth boys? Because they are points. Broken Memories is gonna get us back a Great card this turn. Mm -hmm. A healthy chomp chomp to you too. Let's throw out a link that didn't hit the mark. Wow. Uh, we can use a rubble morsel as our way to get a perils of production out on the field. And then Shelter comes after the Echo Break and Broken Memories. Don't need to take any frontline damage here with the Echo Break. A broken Memories for a Plink back atop the deck or a Perils of Production? Probably a Plink, honestly. Yeah, you're going to be eaten at the end of the turn. Uh, do I want to give you extra damage on Lifesteal that won't pass on, or do I want to... Pop open this. Oh, actually, I've got two more consumes this turn. Okay, we'll pop open that. 
I guess we put HP on the frontliner. Actually, no, it is going to split this turn, right? So it'll want HP back after the hit. But this is six, and that is four from the morsel. I guess the... Oh, the capacity is still gone. I, I, I was reading the charged echoes as the capacity for some reason. Whoops. Cool. And now the other one hatches. Seems like this is working out pretty well. Question, if an egg with armor hatches, do the minions that spawn from the egg also have said armor? I do not know. I may have actually just demonstrated it and I still wouldn't know. Solid plinking work right there. Let's get the energy factory continuing to flow up on the top line. Uh, as I do that two times, we can get the bog flies up to their full value. As soon as Oh, I can do that to any unit. Okay, I definitely should have done that to the conduit infiltrator there. Oops. It's all good. Yeah, this one comes out with armor 20. That's like the egg says this comes out with armor 20. So that's nah, not relevant on that one. I mean... All good, and that'll work out in the end for us there. Let's leave us vulnerable to this extra forged disciple, though. That's the final wave, though, so we're not really going to be taking that much more damage. Okay, this worked out pretty good. Another gift for a guard. Don't mind if I do. My hope is that we end up killing that top floor. Hope achieved. Consume infused on those two as well. Uh, I mean, host and kin as well as those two might get it. And they do. And that just leaves us open to a couple more planks. For damage's sake. Okay, now I need to try and find in Relentless Phases to buff up the bulk flies, as well as, I guess, the Kinhost Pupa, um, as much as I can. Like, this is a powerful floor, but this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna scale late. Hmm. I need to upgrade this egg at the absolute least. It needs multi-strike, if nothing else. Like, that's fine, but this is not going to kill late stage bosses. Wonder what the champion upgrade is? Extra eggs, bigger eggs? I was going to think... I, I was thinking already that it was going to be an upgrade to its amount of shell removed with a e uh, hatch and maybe to the health of the bog chrysalis. Well... Just take a number stone. Just need to have, even if I don't necessarily have a way to use it yet. Kinstone, there's the yellowed construct. Can't actually socket that in anyone. Morsel Master also can't socket that in anyone. Right, we've already socketed the two. You're socketed. You don't come with a socket available. We're not going to be able to gorge anyone there. Okay, let's skip these. So this is a two size. We get a one size from it, right? And then we get a one size from this as well. So we currently have four capacity, which gives us the ability, the flexibility rather to play on every floor. Um, the Light of the Seraph does give us the ability to put more morsels down on the same floor. That is appealing. Our ability to use the plinks to actually generate that though is gonna start waning pretty quickly. Extra draw gets us to the ability to use uh, Perils of Production as more consistent energy generation as well as a lot more cars in hand. Also gives us the ability to try and get more uh, more consumes off early as well as more 
more consumes off early as well as more candies on an individual floor. And especially with Split Anvil. Yeah. This is our energy. The capacity is the other thing, right? I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the capacity possibly being the way to go here. But I think the fact that the Plinks are going to start is going to be a problem for us. Space so we can dupe the egg. We can already dupe the egg and put it down. Endless. Endless? Endless on an egg. Okay, hatch says triggers is removed to remove shell. Unit will hatch. Does the unit die? Plus three per and multi-strike on egg. So if, if I have all four echoes full on a floor, this is plus 12 damage. This is just plus 10 already. If I'm missing a single echo, the strength stone is better. The hatchling kills it. Okay. What did it convince you to take every shard possible for the ultimate hard mode? Uh, honestly, just a couple more runs, right? I, I feel like I really want to focus on getting my grounding, getting my bearing a little bit first, and then start doing nutty things with it. Can I go over four, and won't you be doing that more with gifts? It's true, I will be doing that more with gifts. Am I locking myself out of the possibility of going for multi-strike twice on this? Is that even good? I'm going to experiment with that. Here's another Echo Stone. Same office as well. Intrinsic and Twin Stone. So, Intrinsic Gifts would need a... I, I forget to check them because I can't leave that screen until I take them. However, I can look at this and then I can leave and I can go back. The reason I forget to check them in that direction is because this locks me into a choice. This gets me the ability to see things and then come back. So, I wouldn't be able to play the the gifts for whatever until here. Because I would have to decrease its cost so I can play the egg on the first time. That's pretty bad. What else can I do? Honestly, shelter with uh, the twin stone feels pretty good. That's like good scaling defense for us. Anything else? Shelter with uh, twin stone feels really good. Intrinsic gifts is bad. You don't want to decrease cost because Anvil. No, it's fine. So, gifts. Gifts is three cost. The rest of my deck is one cost, except for the Umbra Stone. So after Gifts is reduced to two cost, it still decreases the majority of my cards. So it's it's fine for the Gifts of a Guard to be intrinsic and two cost. In fact, I kind of want to go both of these. I'm going to have to commit to going to the Merchant of Magic in the next area, though. Straight up, kick these train stewards out of the train. 
heck out of here. You don't give me infuse, you nothing. Removes two shell from eggs and it increases the health on the kin host vessel. Yeah, so it's exactly what I thought. I missed it. What does intrinsic do? Intrinsic puts a card in your opening hand. So if I take this, I can actually pop both of the eggs on turn one. After I go to this merchant magic first. Look at the egg. It's a different egg. Some is a kin host pupa. Is that the same one I'm doing at the moment? Kin host vessel, some is kin host pupa. Yeah. Sick. But that's only one unit that it summons then. Mm, only summoning one unit's a little bad. Well, at least it's got a bunch of extra HP though. Go to the next area. Jaybird returns. Thank you everyone for the uh, Twitch Prime subscription for the ninth month, for the second month in a row. in your remotes and chat. Welcome back to the Republic, bud. Random artifact. Uh, look. We're not killing backliners. At all. Save with hosting kin. And we only have one kill floor. This doesn't even affect us. Wonder what the third upgrade is? Maybe you both eggs? Or maybe even a better egg. Second floor is the capacity limited. I still may have to play on the second floor. Okay, so an echo right goes out in front and then the kin host vessel goes in the second. Why not bottom? I'm not going to be hatching those next turn anyway. Gifts first. Can't do gifts. I have to play this Kin Host Vessel. This deck needs multi air trample. It has trample. They're both hatching this turn. Play you there for the possibility of catching out a... A collector? There we go. That's our Kenhurst Pupus. So this is the one that's buffing itself. Also, it's going to be like hit and then hit overflow, so yeah, the Umbra Stone goes on you. Unfortunately, that means I only get to cast the first chain of sheltered. Unless I'm fine with taking some perils. I'm fine with taking some perils this time. Uh, but the shelter also doesn't provide that much. Go for the sheltering first. Follow a plink thereafter. Actually, I could have put something atop the deck with the the broken memories. Eh, there's nothing I actually would have wanted to put specifically atop the deck there. Okay. Um, I consumed, I guess, put a plink there just for the sake of damage. Do 
Kill 13 to remove it. No, but I can't kill anything on that top line now. So this is for 8 armor to everyone? Is that worth it? That's worth it. Yeah, I still need it a lot. I can even use the hosting kin afterwards to try and save 9 HP on the frontliner. <sighs> Found our way around that one. Rage Requiem, thank you very much for the uh, Team 1 subscription for the second month. Says, gotta head out for now, but we'll be back with the VOD. You're gonna be distracted, so I wanna save the content. Thanks for the stream, have a good one. You too, VOD. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we're, now we're just like hard ember draining this time. Also, don't want to waste as much damage as possible, so. Do it all that way. I feel like we figured out how to do this. I'm liking it a heck of a lot. Of course, Plink didn't hit the right thing. Why would it? Get a backliner, and then even you saving a bunch of HP. That extract is no longer going to be viable for doing that consistently, though. Fuse. 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 I don't need to cast anything next turn. Didn't need to play Ember Drain on the champion then. I also didn't need to not to. Perils needs hold over now. Possibly. Or I cut more cards from the deck. What? That gives me gifts for a guard, and it gives me it at two cost. Well, one cost after I played it the first time with the first hand, right? Return three random spell cards from the discard pile to your hand and apply consume. That's also not bad. Consume to fill up your. If we're an Ember Drain deck, this fills six slots, six candies. Can I make it intrinsic? Divine Temple. There's only one more Divine Temple. It's just, if I draw this late, it's garbage. Not worth anything to me. Ember Drain on enemies still affects us. So yeah, we would just be extremely Ember Drain. I don't think it can be Soul Siphon. Because unless we draw it in the first... Well, no, because we keep eating things. Oh no, but we're going to be consuming three spells in the opening hand with the Gifts for a Guard. So the Echo Rite is already going to be hatching on the first... Yeah, no, this is not necessary. It's only one stack of Ember Drain. It's one stack of Ember Drain per unit. So if there's three units on the enemy side, three units on my side, next turn, I get six less energy. But yeah, you're right. It only it only lasts one turn. If I could make that intrinsic, it's 100% the Soul Siphon, but the Return Soul is so good. It's infused itself. It brings back an infused card, makes it cheaper, and makes it consume, which then makes it trigger etch. It's, it's, sorry, it's just, it's, it's this, it's this. Void Binding is looking pretty good. Hey, there's also the possibility of trying to set up a second egg and caving it down. I don't want to do that.
So void binding would honestly it would just be a source of of uh, damage shield for us. Void binding only works if you get holdover. That's not true. Hmm. We're gonna be running Ember Drain high pretty commonly. Cave in is a good catch all if anything gets through your big floor too. That's a good point. That is a good point. I could do what? Cave in's another card that would also activate the split anvil. So if I have three one cost cards, it's actually a saving in hand, but it's also a negative on draw if I'm only using it for that. Hang on. There's a hell vent right there. God dang it. So what I really wanted is the shelter to be zero cost and then to dupe it. It's also on the opposite side of the thing that we want. Void binding would be over... Sorry, double stack would be a good uh, trigger on it, but double stack would also be pretty good on shelter. But no, it increases the cost even further. I have seen Lost Luggage. It was real good. Dump a floor of morsels down. That's not bad, but... We're going to have access to less and less morsels all the time. I'm going to have to skip the gold there. Intrinsic. Is there any sweet play we can do with like a, a return soul here somehow? Can't pay for gifts twice on the first turn. Exactly. Perhaps intrinsic on perils. We're not going to make any decision on it right now. Double stack. As much as I want that, real hard to justify. <laughs> lower the cost of the gifts of guard, reroll, possibly lower the cost of the shelter. We actually got the intrinsic after passing up on Soul Siphon. There was literally only like one chance to get it out of multiple different triggers that could have been there. So I think I still made the right choice. 24 armor inch. Well, because it's a two cost and then it's a three cost. So I would have to have a, uh, a Perils of Production in the middle. Otherwise, it's hard to justify because I can't play it. <laughs> Gotta be playable. <laughs> you can use three amber to play gifts twice on turn oh, one, since cool. Soul Siphon lowers its cost by one. That's only if I don't also want to play the egg, which I do. I do want to play the egg. The egg seems good. Considering it's like doubling my damage on board. <laughs> uh, plus 10 magic power could be useful. Ish. I'm gonna reroll. Holdover Shelter is the way that we actually have scaling defense for the final fight. 
There's also the possibility of holding over return soul. Possibility of holding over our perils. Yes, everyone's... We currently don't need to do that. It doesn't accomplish anything for us. Cheaper shelter makes it cheaper twice. It does. It does. But this gives us the ability to play it every turn. Return Soul is also super interesting. It's like a lot of consume and infuse that we get early. Hmm. Yeah, the second copy does trigger the anvil. So I get to play the rest of my cards in hand. As long as they're not too cost specifically like Gifts Regard, but Gifts Regard is in the opening turn, right? So it's not necessarily... I mean, Gifts Regard is going to relatively commonly get Shelter. That's not that bad, though. If it returns Shelter, I play Shelter two times, get as much out of it as I can. Try and find some way to get it back from the Consume. The problem is, like, I have a Gifts Regard in the opening hand always and i'm casting it on turn one always so it doesn't matter that it can hit shelter it could always hit shelter would second shelter be one if reduced no because gifts regard overrides their cost with zero so if this like completely copies the card it would be another zero cost You could negative one on gifts, plus intrinsic on return. If you take energy, you can play the gift twice in the first round, plus egg. So that is, use the return soul as the intrinsic and try and do that two times on turn one. This is not a bad holdover card. It gives me the ability to start burning out the rest of the cards. Does a lot of etching, does a lot of inspiring. Gives me the ability to fish back in Perils of Production on the turn that I need it. I'm going to give myself full control over my deck. Can play any part of it at any time I like. No packs for me, thank you, but I will go to the concealed car. Huh. Plus one capacity on all floors, plus three on a random floor, negative one on each floor, plus 15 magic power. Plus 15 magic power is pretty significant, but... But... I would never be able to play on the chosen floor. This is to say the size reduced floor. Because it'd be three and I'd have the four capacity. And I'd never be able to give morsels to anything. Get three random space and dupe your eggs. I can only dupe one of my eggs. And unless I get both of them on turn one, they're both going to hatch and I'll have a two, a two, and another two taking up six. You don't have cave in? Doesn't don't have to have cave in. You can't take the negative one unless you gem. Yes, I can. Negative one would give me four capacity. Echo right summons a one capacity. This is a one capacity. So plus three is the one that I'm looking at a little more seriously here. But even then, plus three gives us the ability to play some morsels. But I don't really want the morsels. So I can either get morsels or I can play morsels. Can't do both. One or the other. MP isn't that good since you're trying to give consume to a max of your spells, so it'll only be useful once. That's fine. I have a bunch of them. Just 
just gonna take this one. <laughs> Obviously, the answer is leave. Yeah, just flex on him. Right. Uh, Div Temple, we already checked. Already used the Merchant of Magic a bunch. Try and remove two train stewards, possibly. Sorry, gotta cool the room down a little bit. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just a big Frozen Nostalgia fanboy. It feels like this deck could work with Frozen Nostalgia, so it'd be my pick, says Sal. That's certainly reasonable. Everyone has kind of like pet favorites. 15 armor. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty rough. I'm gonna do it, but it's pretty rough. With only one egg, he only needs three space on the floor to play all these minions. No, I need four. This, two capacity, one egg summons out. Oh, right. You mean if I put the other one down first? I can't put the other one down first because this will... The Kinhost Vessel... The Kinhost Vessel goes in front of the Echo, right? So the other one would be in the front line with only six HP. It would die. Or rather, it could die. I probably just play on top floor. Get myself some space for nothing. So I play on the middle floor. You could play Echo right in front of the other egg. Ooh, yeah, that's reasonable. That's true. Yeah, so that that yeah, that could work. Free capacity would even be fine. Stealth two. It's much of the same, frankly, to me. No, 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 no. There's the shelter. Rough. We use the uh, broken memories to get shelter back here. Plink. Uh, that's a consume. That's a consume. That's a consume. That's a consume plus 20 damage as well. Do that before it does even more damage. We return the blink. Play that. Then we shelter. Shelter again. Broken memories, but shelter back top. The shelter consume was used for the hatch. Pull back gifts for a guard, play it this turn. Sheltering doesn't even give armor because they hatch. Yeah, that's the thing I just mentioned just a second before. Okay. Let's get gifts for a guard. That decreases its cost. I play an Umbra Stone, decreasing the cost of gifts for a guard. I mean, like, etching and inspiring on this floor isn't even that good right now, right? Well, actually, no. It's literally just a setup for the shelter to be huge this turn. And if shelter is huge enough, we're fine. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's pack some morsels. I'll sack one on this floor, giving us the ability to play a Perils of Production. Yes, how I do. Straight up increases the amount. It's pretty nifty. Blink. Blink. And it'd be nice to have a unit on this floor I could kill. 24 and then 26 to everyone is good enough, right? And then I can use an Echo Break to kill one of these and another Echo Break to kill. Yeah. That's good enough. Should've done that in the other order. I didn't know this one didn't have a buff. It's all good. 
They come to the top floor. I take some damage. Should really try and prevent as much as possible, though. Okay, uh, discard pile is eh, not necessarily doing great. We can bring back the plink that is upgraded. Nice, got both of the backliners down. Uh, frontliner is not vulnerable, right? Two extracts for 26 damage. And then the plink, yeah, definitely not enough. So instead we'll focus a little on other floors. We'll also just throw some units away. We should send you to the back, definitely. Just kind of diffusing that enemy for the future. I'm gonna do the same here. Actually, no. Yeah, that'll be easy to kill later. Yeah, I do have an artifact increasing candy capacity. It's Mine Horde. Increase candy capacity by two each floor. Consuming a lot of cards here now. Nothing in that discard pile. Cleaned it all up. Okay, so I want ideally two casts on that floor. One can be Return Soul, the other can be another Echo Break. Actually, all of them should be on this floor. We take the 31 damage on the top floor. We start clearing these out for the next. So we play that Echo Break there. One on the back line. Then we... Extract. I try and roll the Plink? Probably. I had to try. How did it? Okay. So again, we do the same situation here. Just trying to take down... Silent Marksman would be a good target if we get him. Hosting Kin, bring back Hosting Kin. One down. Uh, and then don't really need to infuse on this floor. Is an Inspire trigger at the absolute least? I mean, I could do an Inspire trigger here. Or two. It's also extra damage on the Kinho Pupa that has the Bogmis in it. So we can Echo Break. Two times there. Bring back another Echo Break and do it again. Yeah, these perils are really not, not necessary for this deck. Not how I wanted that one to go. Uh, okay, I'm going to return soul to get Echo Break, Is that there, and then we'll fish for the push next turn as well. Hosting Kin, got him. Well. The enemy had sweet and lifesteal, but they still died. Phew. That could have been rough. 
That could have been really rough. Ooh. Sec. There we go. Uh, accelerated incubation is the removal of shells. Don't need that. Revenge of the Damned. Extract one, deal five damage twice. On slay, gain two. To a random enemy unit twice. Okay, so this just benefits two times from spell damage up. Big benefit it has. There's also Return Soul, but I am burning my deck very quickly. So I don't need that. Slay to gain two energy. I mean, it's a good card to get with Gifts Regard. I don't know if we need any of these. It's not a random enemy, though. Yeah, yeah it's not. So you can only get one Slay with it maximum. Wait a second, that was... It give you candy, not energy. Okay, that could have been more useful. Uh, as for these, though... Excaver option? Sure. That one's just for damage. Okay, uh, we still really need multi-strike on the Kinhost Vessel. But it's opposite a merchant of trinkets. Uh, there's a merchant of steel in the next line as well, but it's opposite a unstable vortex. I'm honestly not going to want to remove that many more cards from the deck at this point. I need them. They're fuel. So I think that means I have to go for the merchant trink. Well, actually, that's that's next one unstable vortex as well. I really need that multi-strike. Cool. When you summon your champion, it gets plus 30%. Eh, that's very minimal. Advanced prototype. Steward units get plus five, plus five. I mean, I'm probably about to try and remove those. Remove the perils you don't need. Sometimes they help smooth over an early turn. But yeah, perils are probably... It's it's like two stewards, two perils. Those are the two easier removals in this deck. Take money. All right, Concealed Cavern, what do you go for me? Gifts of Gratitude, Heaven's Gold, and Petty Theft. I mean, Gifts of Gratitude theoretically could get us a giant amount, right? Two perils of production, just pop it. Heaven's Gold isn't that bad either. I'm holding a lot of money right now. If I leak any damage, this just stops us from taking a bunch of damage back. I think I'm actually just going to take that for safety. Spell cards with consume have a 50% chance to be discarded instead. Whenever a card is consumed on this floor, triggers etch. So not when you play a card that has consumed, but when a card is consumed, which means wing clippings might, might rough us up a little bit. Ah, Forever Flame is two gifts regard on turn one. One extra energy on turn one. Yep, that's that's definitely worth it. As it turns out. Alright, Bell. I'm gonna be adding Scourge cards to my deck. I need to set up as low as possible. I'm probably just gonna take the... Oh, there's a Perils. We'll be fine. Okay. Go right. Kinho's Vessel behind that. Uh, 
us into Gifts for God. Ooh, Umbra Stone. You'll love to see it. It'll pass that on. Yeah, it'll pass that on. Then a... Clink gets both of the backliners. Hell yeah. You even get some morsels out there. Do I even want to do another Gifts for God this turn? How's it benefit me? Just eats a bunch of stuff. All I need to do is... Yeah, just play one more... Just consume another thing. I'm just going to consume the Barrel's Production. Get consumped. Nice. Uh, yeah, now it's literally just like manage the enemies as best I can. Which really ought not be that hard. I might not even bother with the returning soul. Yeah, I don't think I need it this turn. But do I need it next turn? No. Uh, honestly, it's very difficult for me to need anything right now. Shelter. Good costing right there. Love having a ridiculous amount of energy after that regardless. Trying to get as many of those as we possibly can. Start setting these up on the top floor. A broken memories to hit anything? Not really. Get a upgraded plink out of the deck. And then we shelter in place for two times. Trample the second one. It's not necessary. The front line is always going to be big enough that the front line isn't going to be doing any trampling. More morsels. And also get rid of the train suits. Nice. Did the bug just say Q? I haven't even been noticing any of the flavor text that's been occurring the entire time. Okay, I'm going to use Perils this turn. And it's so that I can try and get double giant shelter out. How much energy is that going to cost, right? One on the second cast? Okay, it's totally fine. Um, I can't regenerate energy right now, though. Unless this kills it. No, it can't kill anything because I just killed with it. Dang. Alright. So we'll go Echo into No Plink. It's Shelter, Shelter, Return, Soul, Shelter, Shelter. Hundred and thirty six across the floor. reduce the cost of your cards. Ah. Oh, the second shelter? What? The second shelter costs one. So did the plink that I had in hand. Shelter into excavation. Then you can... I, I didn't want to shelter excavation. We're going to have to look at that play later, because I, I was certain I couldn't use Split Anvil that turn. I was trying to sequence around it. Shelter 4 was free. Why was the Shelter 4 free? Oh, because return reduces the cost. All right, so the shelter that came back was zero and then zero. 
right got it got it right that makes sense harry that makes sense it makes so much sense it almost makes dollars harry uh, let's use what happened to all my energy return stop oh right yeah damn ember drain that's fine let it go i really need to dupe shelter I don't need to do anything this turn, though. Pass that up and pass again. You know that amount of shards you can play the Glug Slider? Glug Slider was a flawed two choice. I couldn't have known I was going to end up in a situation where I can do things like this. Confusing and uh, I'll do. The multi strike with trample should now definitely go behind the champion. If you put the candies on other floors, the boss continues to take damage. Oh, yeah, I did forget that we're actually putting reef on things. Excuse me, sir, but what the hell? I mean, I do have candy to spare, right? I'm not extracting much yet. It's just... It doesn't hit the boss for me often. It doesn't hit the boss for me much at all. Because I have to, like, I'm, I'm gonna be casting it on my active floor, obviously, because I need to, you know, I don't want to invest six onto a different floor and then infuse there. It does say kill any enemy unit. It does say that. If the spell had trample, why doesn't it hit the boss? Because my kill floor is the same as the floor that this would be executing on. So I would have to have a way to kill all of the frontliners and then play this to hit the boss. It's not like it can't hit a boss. It's just significantly less likely to. Oh, this doesn't deal it to frontline. I just assumed it was to the front enemy unit. I assumed it was just... Because it had to be, right? There's no way it would make sense otherwise. Turns out it makes sense otherwise. Uh... Draw. It's always going to be the draw there. Uh, we already have the multi-strike we were looking for. Which now means we actually do have the ability to go to other shops. I'm totally fine going to the here and removing the the double, right? Um, let's look at the let's look at the merchant magic first. Double stack. Not really going anything I want to use. With perfect insania with plus ten magic power. Yeah, exactly. Six seventy six. That's so much better. Hmm. Xcab could totally be two cost and I'd be happy with that. Negative one on perfect on Saturday. Really? I don't necessarily think I'm definitely going to lock that in. 
Uh, okay, let's go concealed cabins next. Random consumables, neat. Capacity and morsels, again, could be the armor. That looks pretty good. S no, no spell weakness, because we haven't got Stygian. Stygian spell weakness would have been what I wanted. Negative one holdover. I mean, look, if we see holdover, or if we see permafrost, we might do these things, but unfortunately we can't just summon them into existence, sadly. Multi-strike? None of these will give multi-strike. One horn's tome is not a response from this. Emperor box. Just getting two imps. Um, I mean, the imps are zero cost as well from the Forever Flame, so it's seems fine to me. Don't necessarily know what they're going to do for us, but it's fine. Let's find a magic power and then remove consume. On what? Okay, the removal is definitely both train stewards. Get the heck out of my deck. Perfect, so you can keep pulling with gifts. So that doesn't work anymore, Jaybird. Uh, I, I was going to get caught out by that as well. Um, if you put the consume removal stone on something, it no longer overrides any additional consumption being added to it as of this DLC, specifically so you can't do things like that. Really sad. How dare they. The first thing we do is negative cost the X cav. <laughs> We could pop a plus 20 and consume on like a like a plink just for some extra damage early on. Is extra damage early on worth anything to us? Not really. Remove consume. <laughs> yeah, I'm not super jazzed about removing consume. Feels like eventually everything gets consumed. <laughs> So this one's holdover. This one's permafrost. It doesn't need to be upgraded right now then. Honestly, I probably hold on to my money still. This better be the best merchant of trinkets that ever did exist. So this is 15. That divine horde gets us to the hundred. Broken memories with consume remove. can do that. I don't think it's huge though. Three shell. Bogadeep Cocoon. Oh, this egg is a three size and it summons a bog wormling with a zero one. What the hell is a bog wormling? Honestly, etch apply four armor to friendly units is pretty good. Every time I consume anything, four armor to the floor. I consume roughly everything. Boggity, Cocoon is incredible. New egg, new egg, big egg. Okay. Okay, chat. Big egg. <sighs> There's honestly not even that many cards I want to bring back. It's just shelter, basically. I'm gonna hold off. I'm still gonna hold off. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play the small egg before the champ now. Which is actually fine, because in the end of the last battle, I started to feel like the... Or, or actually, I even said it out loud. That uh, the... Where, am I, where are you? That the kin host needs to go behind the echo right from here on out, because the echo right is effectively just going to uh, provide more armor standing directly in front of the kin host doing the multi-striking on damage. Adelon, thank you very much for the uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Enjoy your modes and chat. Welcome to the Republic. I'm not going to wear my headphones for a bit. i getting real sweaty and stuffy in here. Uh, enemy units enter with spell shield 2. I mean, I don't really do spell damage to enemies at all. Luna is getting very sleepy. No, not me. I could go on for days, so I'll move to the bed. Going to be watching from my phone, so probably won't be pretty active anymore. Fair enough, Sal. So. 
I'll, uh, I'll catch you soon. So we still hard casting on the bottom floor. What's this bog deep? Okay, no, it's not even gonna show me what the bog deep do then. What that bog deep do though? Um I mean I just don't want to be ember drain next turn if I can avoid it. So it seems like setting up on floor two and just foregoing any damage here seems reasonable. Kinhost. You. Uh, trample. Okay. Bog wormling can trample etch, etch, etch gives it plus ten, plus ten. You know, consuming cards. Oh wow. You can't stop me now. I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. I'm not saying don't stop me. I'm saying you can't. It's not possible. So I just consume as many cards as I can, right? Then go. I don't really want to be echo breaking all of my own units constantly, though. It's only if the consume happens on that floor I even get the bomb. I can throw away perils of production right now, at least. Though. Well, I don't pass, right? I play these on the bottom line. No, because I don't want them to the consume. I want them to consume specifically on the bog worm link. They play that there to remove the spell shield and then. Okay. Uh shelter. Ooh, double perils. Broken memories to pull back in future. Okay. Um I might just lock myself out of energy here. And I can't play the Umbra Stone though. Don't need the Umber Stone. It's a good point. It's a good point, well made. No more energy for me. Who needs energy? That's not me. Uh, we echo break those backliners. Umber Stone out there as well. Uh, d -d 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 perfect insanity, no. Because it's fine if I get him drained here, I don't care. Um, so to be shelter, shelter, return soul, shelter, shelter. Just trying to set up HP. I will do it. That'll do it. Hey, this, uh, this input box could totally just give us energy. Uh, what's up? <laughs> oh, good lord. Hey, Steve! Says, hey, Raps, hope you're enjoying the DLC. This is the only response I can give. There's so much! It's like I didn't necessarily expect it to be small, but... There's so much more? than I even thought would possibly be in it. Good lord. Well done. Oh. It's been all I can do for the last 
two streams of just not trying to squeal, or rather trying to not just squeal constantly about it. Okay, Return Soul brings back... <laughs> Perfect insanity. Uh, we can't even really hit units with that right now. So the Broken Memories would be bringing back... Gifts for a guard. I haven't drawn yet because of the Dun Echo. So I could I, I could bring back a zero cost Gifts for a guard and then draw it. Could hit the first Ember Wing with Lost Insanity? No, I couldn't have. Um, I uh, specifically didn't use the Lost Insanity on that turn because if I used it on that turn, I wouldn't have had the ability to shelter because I would have lowered my um, my candy count ridiculously. Also, it just wasn't necessary. Okay, so we've broken memories, gifts for a guard. No, wait, it doesn't reduce its cost. But I also have energy in my discard pile. Maybe I just go for a shelter, get more HP. How are we doing? 170. We're on floor, round three, I think. Honestly, more HP actually may be the way to go about it. Could have played it last? Okay. Thought it was out of resources at that point. Let's go shelter, actually. And then use the return soul to put a also production into my hand so that I have the ability to actually play all of these. Use them all. Just to make sure that I get the extra consume out there. This bottom floor isn't actually going to do anything. I was just kind of keen to see if it worked. It's pretty far from relevant to our game plan. Can I consume the entire deck? Honestly? Especially after I go through with removals, I could totally see it happening. The insanity is finally out. Uh, I mean, I could use the perfect insanity here. I kind of want to just to see it. That's rad. Hosting kin a couple times and then pull back. Honestly, let's get rid of a hosting kin. Pretty much not seriously something I want to play consistently. Amber Drain. Amber Drain, again. Really just to burn it out of the deck at that point. Go to the back. Perfect instant. And then Perfect Insanity is still in the deck, by which I mean it is currently in hand. Close one. Woo! Made it through. What kind of ungodly egg is that? That's a bogworm egg, my friend. Soul crushing guilt. Ah. Isn't this not necessary? I could easily cut like both perils just by adding this. Uh, <laughs> power of knowledge. As long as that doesn't get the consume tag on it. How many did we have in the consume bar by the end of that fight? Like, 20? 20 damage per, that's 400 damage. Four hundred damage. I 
I mean, it's no perfect insanity. How does this run beat Last Divinity? We're just nutty. We need more consume fodder. How do I support a frontline unit? So the enemy has sweep. Trample on the bottom floor though. So I'd want to set up on the bottom floor because trample is not going to happen to me. Divinity clears reap, that's fine. I don't need reap to be the way that I do it. Just 666 your way to victory. 666 thing is pretty good. Not consuming shelter and spamming that every turn. Yeah, that's something I do need to do better, right? I need to manage the... Um, what I need to do is think about, at the start of the fight, what I want my end deck to look like. Because clearly I have the power to, like, meet it wherever it wants to be. Just fuel for us. Hey, here's a question. What do we do? If we go over this way, we can actually try and go for buffs on the merchant as well before we do, right? Maybe buff the perfect insanity a couple times. Maybe even double stack the void binding. We don't need to consume faster. We need to have more things to consume. So Gifts Regard is not it. Please don't forget to... Don't worry, I won't forget. It's, I've been planning around it, bud. It's the, there's a reason I left myself right here on 85. Four exciting things get to happen over on the left-hand side. Double stack. It's the double stack I was asking for. We'll hold off on that for a sec. That doesn't need to happen right now. Merchant trinkets, what do you got? Okay. Spells get an extra upgrade slot. That gives me the ability to put double stack on the... Uh, the shelter, and then I can dupe it. Trader's Quill is... Trader's Quill is pretty good. Trader's Quill will give me the ability to deal significantly more damage to the boss. Definitely, definitely Trader's Quill. You come along. Definitely Lightstone Casing too. I don't think I need base charge. Excuse me. I don't think I need base jobs, though. No! I don't need these! Uh... Honestly, 25 is probably way better than this. So this double stack can now go on shelter. Or I could double stack and double cost her to use the Void Binding. That's pretty good too. So the Void Binding being zero cost after the double stack, apply four damage shield, rage 12. Rage 12 is uh, 24 damage. No memories this time. Memories? Oh, the Broken Memories? I still don't really want to do it to Broken Memories. Unless I have the ability to generate more Broken Memories, like uh, with the, the Wild thing. 
then I don't necessarily want to do it. He had a bit of a problem with Ember Drain before. A little. Question how to remove delay on stream. Uh, reset. Refresh, maybe. Changing quality sometimes works for me at least. This regard down to one cost doesn't seem to help me at all. shelter. Turn low latency on. I mean, if there's a user version of that, I have the low latency mode on myself. Do you broken memories infinite consume fodder? Oh, right. You mean like, so just broken memories, the broken memories, the broken memories, the broken memories, and they don't do anything except generate one another. And then we have the consumption. So that's what? One consume every turn? Well, actually, it's two consumes every turn, right? Because we play broken memories, which itself is not an infused card. Um, putting a broken memories back on top of the deck and then we play an infused card drawing that broken memories and then we play that broken memories putting the other broken memories back atop the deck okay that's actually pretty good I'm a you know um, we should negative one something before we reroll something with the rain makes sense I mean, perma on the perfect insanity makes some sense. It's just whether or not it's necessary. Let's wait a second before we do that. Go to the Merchant of Trinkets. Reroll. When a card with Extract is played, gain an energy and also a charge. Uh, an Echo. I don't think we have much extract. Just those two? Three. Yeah, just three cards in the deck with it. Honestly, we may just want to... No, but we don't want to remove that many cards. We need fuel. We need fuel to burn. Mask is an easy take. Yeah, it'll draw us a couple cards, I guess. Sure. Yeah, I think Broken Memories, the, the double cycling of just those two does make a lot of sense. I honestly don't even think I use this removal. I don't want those Perils of Production in the deck, but I do want to burn them more than I want to play, uh, more than I want to do anything else there. Go back here and use permafrost on insanity. Also decreases cost. Move a card plus twenty consume. Plus twenty consume on a plank. Peace. And then I'm not even gonna use that, I'm just gonna bounce. You have chase, so the first card to get consumed anyway. Yeah. So I play things with natural consume on them first if I can. Nice. You can already do that with the packed morsels. Um, we still set up on the bottom line. Yep. There's purifiers we set up on the bottom line. Let's consume that one. I draw right now. No, because I might get both of the both of the ones. You now have third less previous pyre damage? Sure. We'll count how many times the pyre does damage. Uh oh, there's broken memories number one. We need to get that into the pool for the second. Uh man, I'm not really getting the right cards for this yet. Echo Break would be our first infusing. Wow. 
claim also to draw. I'm holding off on doing that just in case I want to put something specific on top of my deck, like the uh, Broken Memories, Broken Memories combo. Because it's possible I return Soul and just start going off again this turn. In fact, it's quite likely. Okay, so I didn't get the second Broken Memories. I have no other sources of draw at the moment. slightly earlier. It's fine, I can be locked out of energy for a little bit. Alright. Didn't draw broken memories, fine. Only had some sort of a drip fall. those and then do I even need to do anything else? Consume as many cards as possible. This does need to be consumed before the end of the turn. Actually should have done in that water and then drawn it and then played it. Yeah, yeah, I should have kept going. Let's start trying to charge up other floors if at all possible. There's the second Broken Memories. Now we have Gifts for a Guard back here too. Cool. So this Broken Memories puts a Broken Memories atop the deck. Um, and then we use... Honestly, I'm going to return Soul the Forgotten Trade here. Then we use Broken Memories on Broken Memories again. Use a Forgotten Trade. Imps. We actually have a Perils of Production that could even go out. This Plink isn't going to kill anything, but a Plink drawn from a Gifts for a Guard might. At the Shelter. Alright, well then we overplay this floor as much as we can. Hear the back nine twice. Fair. Uh, we'll use Perfect Insanity against the Seraph as a result of that. Should probably just take as much damage off the enemies as possible here. Void Binding for HP or Void Binding for damage? Do the broken memories, broken memories this turn as well. I can't really generate energy. No, I can, I can. We've got a perils of production there, that's fine. But I would have to pull the perils of production out first. Okay, we're going to slow our broken memories roll by one turn. That didn't work. Oh, no, wait, it does. Never mind, it puts it in hand. It doesn't put it to the top of the deck, so we didn't need to draw. But... It's going to take a while before I lock in how these games, this, these games, these uh, cards individually work and how they work together as well. But for the moment, it's pretty good. What's that stealth? Yep. Yeah, it's got stealth. Not going to be able to do that. Anything about that at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, nice. Say broken memories, broken memories, and then just hold. I guess. Yeah, and then just hold. Okay, now Ember Drain is actually starting to cause problems for us. Didn't think it would. Oh well. Um, thankfully, when it causes problems for me, the problem it causes is that I still win. It's 
good problem to have. Self, and then Perfect Insanity can't even be played on the top floor. Can't even be played on the middle floor right now either. Or bottom never. Yeah, I think the gain in energy and extract uh, candy on extract play would have been the right choice. It just felt like I don't have many extract cards. Throw that, and then echo break and broken memory on a broken memory. 15, that light wing is going to be a problem. Imagine if broken memory was infused. Yeah. Oh, that'd be ridiculous. Unless it drew before it put the to uh, card on top of my deck. I don't really have the ability to draw again, but I should do it. GG. He draws after? So yeah, having that infused would be great. So, so far, that is zero times that the Pyre attacked. So it would have done zero extra damage had I not spent money. Oops. Hmm? Hmm? There we go. Not use this chair. Big number though, but it doesn't do anything. It's a big number that does nothing. So he's still set up on the bottom row for the sake of anti-trample. Also gives us the ability to actually get use out of all of our cards here. Start with gifts for a guard. Keep going. Uh, hang on. Packed Morsel should have gone out, and I should have played a bunch of Morsels before I played Echo Right. Would be the right way to handle that. So I guess if I want the ability to eat any morsels, it's a well to help her in the middle line that's eating them right now. Mm, nice. Let's keep getting rid of them when I can. Do I really want to gift regard again this turn? Yeah, I have to. Uh, it does get the perfect insanity off. Okay. Worth it. Mm, both the perils of production have come with consume. I think I might actually just throw those away on the top line. I think it caused enough problems last time. That's some pretty good turn one damage. There's a third Perils in your deck, though. Yep, that's fine. Getting rid of two of them is already pretty good. Definitely start with the Trample Stone.
Things really help out here. Am I going to return soul anything now? Definitely not perfect insanity. I could bring back excavation eruption and cast that. Wouldn't be too sad about that. Especially if it killed anything. Guess it doesn't though. So I'm still... No, no, no. I, I, I can't draw anymore. It's fine. Shelter is staying alive at least. So Broken Memories gets back gifts for a guard at this point? I didn't dupe the shelter, right? And shelter's gonna be in my discard pile when gifts for a guard is in my hand. That's fine then. Shelter up. You're on about half HP now, Divinity. Let's see what we can do about that. I'm gonna lose Void Binding right now to the uh, Disregard. Totally fine with that. Let's go... Broken Memories into Broken Memories. Disregard. Into broken Memories. Broken Memories into... You best believe I'm going to use Broken Memories now. And get a Morsel, which draws us a Broken Memories, which we use to get a Broken Memories. So now we're looking to take down individual units as best we can. One there, there. Void Binding off and goes on the front line. Scar Pile has a shelter that I could try and feed for right now, or fish for right now, rather. What's the memory? Uh, what's the benefit of broken candies into bro oh, sorry, broken memories into broken memories? Just candy generation. Um, it's it's not even candy generation because they're not infused. It's the bog wormling has uh, the etch keyword, which says triggers when a card is consumed on this floor gains plus ten plus ten. It also triggers the trader's club. If I return soul that shelter, I can double cast it this turn. Yep. That's a hundred to everyone on the floor. It's definitely worth it. Broken, broken, pull back, broken, broken, and. just going to be like that for the rest of the fight. Broken. Broken. Okay. What am I pulling back with this one? Uh, I mean, perfect insanity. I could try and just get off two times here. They're taking a lot of my damage. Like, all of it right now, actually. I plan on pushing Divinity to its relentless phase. No, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go for a faster kill than that. Oh, I definitely can't bring back Lost Divinity. I don't have the ability to fund it. I guess I bring back and use a plank. Get rid of it. Apparently I'm not allowed to get that kill. Broken. broken. Roger, roger. Broken, broken. Maybe damage against the back line. Man, they're really trying. 
Why must they try? So that sweeps through the back line. This one isn't going to die yet. So cast some stuff on this floor. Let's return a soul and get rid of the echo break. Yeah, I like how it tries to slaughter all of the floors at the same time. Not even just all three. It tries to go for the pirate at the same time, too. Man, that bog wormling is uh, looking a bit rough for wear. At least a little bit worse for wear. I mean, I'm giving it another plus 20 each turn, so that's, that's already more than enough. And the etchings. Oh, not that. Sorry, it's the bring back plank. Starting to run out of cards at this point as well. Why are the enemies now dealing more damage to my bog worm? Did I in can you a bunch? Yeah, I in can you a bunch, didn't I? Dang. This is infused, so I can actually... Excuse me? The reason it wasn't showing anything there because... Wow. Was because the enemy uh, had a spell shield. I thought it wasn't showing anything because I couldn't target it, which is why I tried to target it. Rough. Okay, it happens. So pop, dust yourself off and continue playing. Another plank in there. Budget. And honestly, just trying to set up for the next perfect insanity. It's probably going to be the last one. <laughs> uh, Derek Shin, uh, this is a bog worm thing. It's big. Sorry, big wormling. My, can't believe it. I keep saying it wrong. It's quite large. You got a spell shield again, didn't you? I see it. I see it this time. Unfortunately, I can't remove it and then kill. I know it's not the end, but now it is. Call an ambulance, but not for me. Does it have spell shields on all three floors? It individually as a target has spell shields. So I imagine yes, but it does have different buffs on different floors. So maybe not. I don't know. I didn't necessarily check. And that's a GG right there. That's a hell of a GG. Perfect Insanity as well as Umbra Stone, the Forgotten Trade. Be pleased with that. That's also our 20 victory as well. Clipped Reflectors give one spell shield to all allies on Enter. That's damn significant. There are some decks that are going to have to think about that from the very start. There are still five cards you haven't seen in Wormkin. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding, right? I I think I only got Wormkin to level 10 like over the course of this stream. I was at level 5 at the start of the stream.